Hallo, ich bin der Videospieler und wir spielen weiter Cathy Rain. Wir haben jetzt äh, einiges rausgefunden über, über, über die Leute hier im Ort. Ähm, wir suchen, haben, haben, wir wollen rausfinden, was mit dem Mädchen passiert ist, das mit 16 Jahren ertrunken ist. Warum ein Großvater da einen Bericht in der Zeitung hat einen Zeitungsbericht ausgeschnitten hat und im Koffer hatte. Ähm, wir wollen herausfinden, wer Cocky ist, welches Callsign das ist und äh, ja. Jetzt schauen wir mal, ob wir vielleicht, ich habe jetzt gedacht, vielleicht rufen die mich an, aber sie haben nicht angerufen, die, die Wade Family. Oh, hello, dear. Reden wir halt nochmal mit der Großmutter, ob die noch irgendwas hat. Ähm, ansonsten Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all. Ah, Lily Meyers. Ach, den Namen. I found den hat sie noch nicht gewusst. Girl's name was Lily Myers. Ring a bell? Oh, yes. Oh, how could I forget? Sue, oh, okay. Jack. Oh, and their children, Lily and Nathan. Do they still live around here? Mother and son do. I, I see them in town from time to time. They live somewhere near the lake. But not the father. Jack, was it? No. He disappeared not long after Lily took her own life. I see. Do you know how I can reach the family? Not really, dear. Like I said, they tend to keep to themselves. The Myers family. I don't see a reason to ask. Okay. See you later, Grams. Take care. Gucken wir mal im Telefonbuch, vielleicht finden wir jetzt die Familie Meier. Alright, found an address. Juhu! Fahren wir einfach hin, oder? Ich rufe da jetzt nicht an. Ich habe eine Adresse. Telefonnummer. Hat sie ja keine reingeschrieben in ihr Notizbuch. Ah. Lakeside Cabin. Es regnet nicht mehr. Schön. Starker Rauch auf jeden Fall. Conwell Lake, where Lily Myers met her demise. Oh gee, I would, but I forgot my swimsuit at home. It's totally overflowing with cigarette butts. Somebody around here is a chain smoker. We have something in common. Good to know. 55 degrees. Not too chilly, thankfully. It doesn't belong to me. I don't want to take it with... Yes? Can I help you? I hope so. My name's Rain. Kathy Rain. Joseph's girl. The one they sent away. Yeah, that's right. Hmm. Well, what do you want? I had some questions about your daughter, Lily. Well, you know what? I don't have any answers, girl. Lily was precious. Special. Lily died. That's all there is to it. My grandfather came to see you, right? To ask about her? Maybe he did. I don't see how that's any of your business. I'm not asking for much, Mrs. Myers. Then clearly, from, from have I have no here. idea what it's like losing a child. Ob das Goodbye. Ob das der Sohn gewesen sein sollte oder die I can see someone moving Mutter. inside. Um. Ich nerv einfach noch mal. Won't you ever give up? She looks pretty annoyed with me. Ich kann ihr meine Kippe anbieten. Hey, nicht so schnell. Won't you care to join me for a smoke, Mrs. Myers? Well, um, I'm gonna have to think about it. What brand? Coralie Cinders, extra long. You got taste. I'll give you that. Oh, I 
I suppose one smoke can hurt. And that's when he realized it was his own bong. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, oh now that was a good one. <laughs> you know what, Kathy, you're okay. Sorry for being such a cranky old bag before I get a short fuse when I run out of smokes. Now that's an understatement. Good thing I had my morning smoke, otherwise we would have had a fist fight on our hands. <laughs> oh, it's getting chilly. Why don't we head inside? Sure, let's go. Now, Ooh. this here's my boy, Nathan. He's special. He's fat. Be polite and say hello to Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Hi there, big guy. Very lifelike. Contrary to popular belief, I don't believe the owls are more than what they seem. Very lifelike. Yet another burial ground for those sweet, addictive, not to mention cancer-inducing sticks of tobacco. I'm a huge fan. Mm. Right, right, right. It's Nathan, Sue's mentally disabled son. <laughs> okay, it's mentally disabled. What you doing, big fella? Drawing. Oh yeah? What are you drawing? The nice red man. You mean Santa? No, the nice red man. Now what did I say about raising your voice at strangers? I'm sorry, Mama. I'll be nice. The red man is nice. Don't mind him. He gets so absorbed in his drawings thanks to that wild imagination of his. Just like his sister. I can smell something cooking. Elk, by the looks of it. They're fairly common in Conwell Woods. Nice painting. It's signed L. Hat das Lilly gemeint. Sue has nailed the tomboy look. So you wanted to ask me about Lily? Yeah. Do you mind telling me what happened when my grandfather came to see you? Well, he knocked on my door a few years after Lily had passed away. I didn't know Joseph too well myself, but I'd heard of him and the good he'd done for the other people around here. So I let him in. He started asking a bunch of questions about Lily, like if I was absolutely sure that she, that it was suicide. And what did you say? The truth. That she was depressed and, and had been for a long time. I had no doubts about what happened. Hmm, all right. Anything else? Well, he was weirdly curious about her paintings. Lily painted? Yep, that's one of hers right there on the wall. I see, it's beautiful. So, in what way was he curious? He asked if Lily had painted anything odd or strange. I, I didn't really get what he was after, but I, I let him have a look at her work. He spent some time browsing through them, and then he wrote something down on a piece of paper, thanked me, and left. Huh. Any idea of what he could have seen? Not really. I had the paintings all lined up. Could have been any of them. Would you mind showing them to me? Well, I would if I could, but this is the only one I have left. I sold the rest many years ago to this weirdo art collector. Do you know anything about what happened to my grandfather? How he ended up in a wheelchair? Stroke, wasn't it? At least that's what I heard. Not necessarily. There are some divided opinions about it. Now that I think about it, that whole ordeal happened to him not long after he came here. How long? A week, maybe, at the most. Hmm. I don't need to ask. Mind telling me what Lily was like, Sue? I'd be happy to. She was Nathan's older sister by two years. Lily was like any girl growing up, normal, happy, talking about school, boys, and whatnot. And she and Nathan were close back then, always playing together in the woods. When Lily was ten, she started drawing, always doodling on just about anything she could get her hands on. We didn't have much, really. 
and so she used what she could once I even caught her scribbling on toilet paper. On her 12th birthday, we gave Lily a thick sketchbook with an assortment of pencils. She was ecstatic. That was the happiest I'd ever seen her. From that day, drawing became her life. Eventually, her art teacher at school helped her to get started with oil painting. When Lily was 15, something changed. At first, I thought it was just usual teen angst, but no, this was something different. She started going out, disappearing for long periods of time. She locked herself in when painting. She never used to do that. I tried everything, counseling, support groups, antidepressants, nothing worked. About a year later, she just gave up and well, you know the rest. I'm sorry, Sue. That must have been unimaginable. Thanks, darling, but it's been a while now. I've learned to live with it. I don't need to... Does the name Charles Wade mean anything to you? Well, he's some big-time businessman, ain't he? Yeah, he owns a large company. That about sums up what I know about the fella. Okay. What do you do to support the two of you? Mm, a little bit of this and that. Got me some cash saved up, too. Nathan helps out when he can. What happened to your husband, if you don't mind me asking? You could say he didn't quite cope as well as I did with what happened to Lily. He got himself a death wish after what happened to her. Started drinking and getting into all sorts of trouble. Five years left for him in the joint now. Been there for 15. Man, that must be rough for you. Oh, we're doing just fine without him. Aren't we, Nate? Mama takes good care of us. Mama sure does. So, tell me about Lily's art. It used to be about cheerful things. Landscapes, animals, bright colors. But as she drifted further into depression, she started painting horrible things. Death and decay. And the last few pieces looked like something out of a nightmare. That's awful. Did Lily ever get any recognition for her art? Not really. Except from the guy I told you about who bought most of her paint. Tell me about this art collector person. Rich, fancy looking, in his 50s or thereabouts. I'd say he'd be around 70 now if he's still alive. He knocked on that door one day with a wad of cash in his hand. $5,000. He wanted everything that Lily so much as touched with a brush. Huh. Did he say why? Nope. But I got the feeling that most of that dough was paid so he could avoid any questions. I took the money. I still had Nathan to support. Did the stranger give you his name? No. Well, his face was far from forgettable, though. Big nose, bright blue eyes, looked black Irish. He had a thick black mane, turning gray, no beard. All right, Sue. Thanks. Okay. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Come back anytime. Hi, 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 hi. A few sheep. Hey, Sue. Do you recognize any of these men? Well, there's Joseph Rain. <laughs> Always so handsome. I had such a crush on him back in the day. And no way. That's him. Uh, the man who bought the paintings. He's he's much younger here, but there's no mistake in that hair and nose. Are you sure? I'm positive, little cat. That's the guy who walked into this cabin with five grand in cash. That's very helpful, Sue. Thanks. Maybe he was it. Another question for the oh, Mr. Reed. I think I'm gonna head off now. Sure thing, little cat. Come back anytime. It's getting late. I should head back to the city. Okay. You. Hello, Eileen. Hey, you're still up. I was wondering when you'd show up. How did it go? Long story. I found out about some stuff that happened when I was a kid. Wow, what a mystery. 
So what's the plan now? I don't know yet, but I'll figure something out. What about this Charles Wade? You still haven't talked to him. And that strange bright picture you showed me? Those tapes? Listen, I know this guy. Eileen, relax. We can talk about it tomorrow, okay? Oh, it's way too late now. No, I couldn't possibly sleep now. I'm way too excited. Well, that makes one of us nighty. <sighs> Good night, Kat. Hey, Kathy, wake up. Ugh, you are so lucky there are no sharp objects near this bed. Guess what? I got an idea. Please tell me it involves you taking a sabbatical. Aha, so you found all this evidence, right? Pictures, tapes, and stuff? I guess. Why? Well, as you know, I have a computer. And I know this hacker guy, Dave, and... Oh, never mind. I'll just write you a note. You go back to sleep. Seriously, Eileen, sometimes I just marvel at how your brain works. I know, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, just write you a note. Are you sure you want to do this, Catherine? You still have time. If you think there's any chance you would change your mind. I'm sure, Doctor. Just get it out of me. But please, don't tell my mom. I'm sorry, but we have to do that. It's the law. It's none of her business. It's my choice to make. I have enough shit going on with her already. This would just add fuel to the fire. I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. Fine. Let's just get this over with then. Right this way. Was zum Teufel macht die? Ugh, I hate that dream. Oh, and I hang the note on the computer. I guess I... Nah. <laughs> Oh, what's this? Hi, cat. Feel free to use my computer while I'm away. My password is Angel Love, without the quotes. If you call my friend Dave at 555-2492, he can set you up with some software. I'll be back in a few hours, super psyched about the investigation. E. P.S. No gum on the keyboard, please. Remember the last time? Oh, please, like she actually uses the space bar? Shit, looks like she forgot to write down the username. Oh well, shouldn't be too hard to guess. I think it's just some combination of her first and last name. Hacker Dave. I'm no geek, but I know how to use one. A computer, that is. Not a geek. Wie heißt sie? Eileen? Irgendwas. Oh, verdammt. Ah, Mildred. Eileen's girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. Was war's? I, I lean love, oder?
Eileen's girly suitcase. There's a sticker on it with her full name. Eileen Mildred Summers. Eileen Mildred Summers. I'm no geek, but I'm a computer. Hi, cat. Feel free to use my computer while I'm away. My password is angel love, without the quotes. If you call my friend Dave at 555-249, super psyched. That missing username is a bit annoying. Was? It's Mike. Hi, Kat. If you call my friend super psyched, that missing username is a bit annoying, but I think I can guess it based off her names. Eileen Love Ich rufe wieder mal den Hacker an. Ja. Hey, I'm Kathy. Eileen said to call you about some software. Ellie who? Eileen. Red hair, glasses, speaks so fast, her gums ache. Oh, right. I thought her name was Errol. Figured it was kind of a weird name for a girl. You must have a hearing disorder. You must have a thinking disorder. Ha 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 ha, burn! Wow, just wow. So, uh, the software? Oh, yeah. No, can't. Not really. Ugh, <sighs> I knew she was full of shit. Nah, I mean, sure, I used to be able to get pirated software. But not anymore. There was this misunderstanding and my network privileges were revoked. Me and Clyde, the campus IT guy, don't really see eye to eye. We used to play bocce together and let's just say he is one sore loser. Can't you just patch things up with the guy? No way! He's such an ass! He even thinks TNG is better than the original series. He thinks the what is better than the what? I know, right? Can you believe that? 
You wow, you're so well, okay. Only an admin account can change the access port. The only way to even theoretically crack one would be if Clyde logged on to a machine to which we have unrestricted physical access. And Oh, I got an idea. I'm not gonna like this. Well, what you could do is intentionally crash your PC. That sounds especially stupid. Well, not crash it, crash it. Just crash it a little, then call Clyde. Clyde will come over to fix it. If you're lucky, then he'll log on to the network using his admin account. Afterwards, you can use some of my tools to find and crack the password locally. Worth a shot, I guess. Okay, you can- No way. I have severe IBS. It just wouldn't work. IBS? Uh, you seriously don't want to- I'll have my buddy drop off everything you need. It's not rocket science. You do what I ask, and I'll get you some juicy software. With pro quo, Clary. Whatever, Clarice. weirdo. Na, es ging schnell. These must be the instructions from Dave. There was a floppy disk in there with a note taped to the back. It's labeled one. Boot your computer using the blue floppy. Two, use the corrupt MBR utility to crash the file system of the computer. Take the floppy out and reboot. Three, call Clyde at 555-8181, tell him your computer crashed, and give him the error code on the screen. He'll come over and have a look. It shouldn't take too long for him to fix. Four, now comes the crucial part. You need to somehow make him log on with his admin account. Five. Reboot and retrieve the admin credentials using the blue flop. Six, reboot and log on using Clyde's admin account. Seven, look for some kind of tool to remotely open my ethernet port. Dorm B, room eight. That's it. And remember, if you mess up somewhere, just call Clyde and he'll have to take care of it. It's his job after all. Okay. Dann machen wir dann beim nächsten Mal weiter. Es ist Zeit. Ich sage tschüss, bis zum nächsten Mal. Euer Videospieler. Und damit sind wir am Ende dieses Videos angelangt. Wenn es euch gefallen hat, ich habe noch jede Menge mehr Videos in meinem Kanal. Schaut rein, abonniert, unterstützt mich finanziell auf Patreon, würde mich freuen. Tschüss und vielen Dank.